So science knowledge only adds to the excitement, the mystery, and the awe of a flower. Evidence is evidence. It's public. Everybody can look at the evidence and assess it, and eventually, if there's enough evidence, come to the same conclusion. The Chloe Sanctuary hopes to give you insight into the health and happiness of your companion parrots. We hope to help you build happy homes using reliable and proven tools. The best homes are built on a rock-solid foundation. And the best foundation for a happy home is the bedrock of science. When we stand on the shoulders of giants, the scientists who have worked long and diligently to understand our companions, we can reach new heights of understanding. And understanding is the key to success. I think treated, most of these birds have a good prognosis, and I would say in... What does avian veterinary medicine have to tell us about our feathered friends? How can the tools of behavior shaping make our homes happier for us and our companions? Shape. How can we deal with biting, screaming, or other misbehavior? What is it like to live among parrots? Let them roam around about you and share a life with them. Of the Chloe Sanctuary for Parrots and Cockatoos, a nonprofit charity dedicated to the empowerment of captive parrots and public awareness. I'd like to do a big shout out to those people who make this video cast possible. Cockatoo would not be possible without our patrons. Thank you to those of you who make one-time donations. Without these patrons giving us of their hard-earned cash, we couldn't continue doing this podcast. Hi, welcome to Cockatoo, Cockatoos with Attitude, episode 82. Parrot Personalities, The Illusion of the Unchanging Parrot, and The Game of Tag. Yep. And before we get into the episode, we're going to have, we've got some changes coming up, so we're going to do a little housekeeping. We have a new format. <laughs> You'd think after 81 episodes, we would make a new format, right? We're still going to have a long segment. It's going to usually run about 30 minutes. We're also going to have a few short segments. We'll start off with house cut. Bob, your feathers are going every which way. There you go. We'll start off with housekeeping, where I'm going to talk about the show in general uh, and update you on the latest information. Um, at that time, we'll also give you the title to the next show, so you know what's coming up. So we're in housekeeping now. The next show will be... Probably be Pippa. I think Pippa's going to be the next show. At least, at least sure sounds like it, doesn't it? Pip? Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Pip? Yeah, that's a pip. That's a pip. <laughs> Our next main segment on the next show will be avoiding the accidental cue: how not to inadvertently train unwanted behaviors. I was requested by one of our board members who's been he's been suffering with a ruptured appendix and that's not a good thing. Um, we're hoping Brad gets better soon. 
He's been in the hospital a long time. Um, he's gotten better, and then he's gotten some other complications. So, keeping our fingers crossed for, for Brad in Australia. I would also like our patrons to let us know what kind of positive reinforcers they'd like. Uh, whether they'd like something simple like a coffee cup, uh, shirts, or something else. So if you guys could write patron at chloesanctuary.org and let me know what you'd like. We'll uh, see if we can't come up with some treats for this year. And we're uh, almost at our first goal. We're shooting for $350 an episode as our first goal. Okay. So when we get there, we're going to be giving our patrons some some cool stuff. Right, Lorelai? So um, the way we're going to break this down is we're going to have the main topic. And so this will be like it was before. This will be our general discussion uh, that follows the episode title. And then we're going to have um, three short segments. Right, Lorelai? Do you want to tell what they are? Does Lorelai want to tell what they are? <laughs> we'll have parrot news from around the world as one segment. Uh, new or interesting finds. That'll be a book, a product, or a special find. Something that you guys would probably be interested in. Something you might want to buy. Um, or something that you may be able to get for free online. That kind of thing. And then another segment on training tips. This will be a little gym that may make you and your parrot happier. Those will be the three short segments that we're going to intersperse in our regular video. So um, at, at appropriate times, we'll break for these. Um, we also may occasionally have a short video topic by another uh, parrot vcaster, as in videocaster, uh, somebody else who's a YouTuber. So um, that's the plan, Stan. Right, Lorelei? We have with us today, we have Lorelei, Baba Lou, Peachy Peaches, we got Peaches, Lucy Lou, Coco, Pip Pip Pippa. It wasn't my cue for you to poop on the floor. Sugar. Yes, very good. You have another verse to that song? Oh, yeah. Beautiful verse, Peach. Beautiful verse. And we have Sugar in her new location over here on this side, and Salamander sitting on that new perch that was donated to us up there. Hello. The play stand. Now we're still in housekeeping, so uh, we have a new because we do have dedicated patrons. We don't have very many of them, but we do have patrons who actually are, are donating on a regular basis. So now we're able to buy a few things. We now have an H4. Pro Zoom audio device, and today we're just using it for the first time with the built-in. Now leave her alone. Come here, come here, Peach. Bob, leave her alone. Bob, no, 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 no. Stop that. No. 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 Yeah, this, he started this behavior when. Uh, he got the prolapse. He started getting antisocial. Bob, calm down. Sweetie. Calm down. Come on, sweetie. Calm down. There you go. There you go. Grab a block of wood. Come on, get a block of wood. There you go. That's my boy. You okay, Peach? Now you calm down. Bob, you leave Lorelei alone. Calm down. Just calm down. Good boy. Well, you're not going to play? You're being a silly boy? Okay. So right now we're using just the two built-in mics, but that'll actually do four-channel sound. Um, these guys get loud, and we were using a Zoom H1 before this. And whenever I would be talking and one of these guys would get loud, my voice would automatically drop. So I'm working with this. This is a lot more complicated. There's a lot to learn about it, but um, I have a, it has a built-in compressor and sound limiter, so we're hoping that this will stop that that's that problem with our sound. Um, so today, in our little segments uh, in the news, we're going to have an update on the most endangered parrot in the world, who just might be coming back, 
because we've got some scientists working to, uh, de they're dedicated to saving this bird, and it looks like they've made some major breakthrough. We'll talk about that. Uh, interesting finds, uh, a new microfiber way to clean your cages. You know, getting those bars down there clean can be tough. Well, we found a new way, and it seems to be working, so we're going to pass that on to you. And then on our training tip segment, we're going to talk about how you can find out what treat to give your bird to train it, okay? So how to find your training treat. So scientists have been studying cognition and they found no individual unchanging self in anything. Humans don't have one, as far as we can tell, and neither will our birds. So they're always going to be changing. Um, and all living beings are changing. As we study neural anatomy and you know, basically study how the brain works, we're finding out that there really isn't a little operator in there sitting like on a like on a ship, you know, and and steering the boat. There really isn't that kind of thing going on. So. Um, what we do with using uh, our training techniques is to cause the wind to change so that the, so that the ship of their behavior goes in a different direction. So uh, we can't steer the boat, but we can help them to steer it. And that's what we do. Um, so many people, when they're going to, to find a bird, they say, hi baby. You got a second verse for that song? You got a second verse? No? That's my girl. You don't want a stick or something to play with, baby? Leave her alone. It's okay. Here, here's wood for you to play with, big Bob. Well, I, you know, they'll say like, oh, I just want a ma macaw. I love the way they look. Okay, well, first of all, you need to know the behavior of the species. That's important. Because just how they look doesn't mean anything. You know, I love the way a tiger looks, but I don't want to live with one. So, um, and then they, I want to find one with just the perfect behavior. You know, they're looking for a bird that behaves a certain way. Well, you might find it. You might find a bird that behaves that way, but it's not going to continue to behave that way. That's like, it's kind of like saying that my, my, uh, my newborn will always wear diapers. Uh, my son in college will always be going to college. Um, change is the nature of the universe, so looking for the perfect bird is basically searching for the impossible. Whoops. Well, whoa, 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 that's not nice. Bob, Bob, no, no. Back off, back off. Come here, Pippa. No, Bob, back off. Bob, back off. Bob, Pippa, watch out. No, Bob. No, Bob. Babaloo, no. No. Come here. Come here. That's a good boy. That's a good boy now. Babaloo, calm down. Calm down. That's a good boy. Sit right there. That's a good boy. Come on. Sit right there. That's a good boy. So you're going to change, bird's going to change. Don't look for perfection. Just work with what you've got, and you know, you, it can be pretty exciting because you'll end up with with uh, a bird you never believed you could have. Um, your Bob is he he does a lot better when there's no cameras around. This, this, this doesn't add to his uh, his pleasure in the world, but he's doing all right today. I just have to keep him back, don't I, baby? So, uh, let's just kind of roll through these birds and how they've changed and, and uh, you know, we're talking about how there's no, there's no permanent personality. So, when Bob came here originally, he was a biter and a screamer, he was physically in good shape though, and what he would do where he was is they, would, they, they used to come out and they'd go walk dogs, he was at an animal hospital, so they'd go and walk dogs and they'd walk right by his cage and not talk to him. So. The only time he came out of that cage was when he had his cage cleaned. So what he did is he developed the behavior of lunging, 
and basically staring people down so they wouldn't put him back in the cage. So that was one of the things I had to overcome. But over time, he's gone through a lot of issues. All of them will go through little issues. You catch them early, you can deal with them. It's like if you catch your kids going into the refrigerator and getting ice cream, well, there's ways to deal with it. For one thing, when they reach up to there for their ice cream, there may not be any ice cream in the freezer, okay? So there's ways to deal with that, or it may be that you only have, you only buy like one or two, or you have a separate freezer that's locked, so that you only put one or two pieces of ice cream up there at a time. Or you can start rewarding them for not eating so much ice cream. There are a lot of ways you can deal with it. But then once you're done with that problem, then they're maybe they won't eat the broccoli on their plate. So you're, it's going to be like that. They're not kids, okay? These are birds. These are avians. Dinosaurs. So you can't just say, well, it's just like a child. I'm going to do this. No. But what, you, what you're working to do is to, uh, to deal with whatever comes up. And as early on as you can do it. Bob, calm down. Baba Lou, no. You're not going after her. Calm down. Calm down. Good boy. Good boy. That's Pippa. Yeah, I know you like Pippa. And she's shoved you away enough now that you're upset with her. But So now with his prolapse, I mean, obviously that's changed a lot of things. Um, where he used to be more social with the other birds, uh, now I have to work at it. I had to work at getting him, and for a while he wasn't even in here to do these videos. So obviously I can make steps, little by little, to, to uh, bring his behavior around where we need it to be. And, and that's for him too, I mean he needs to be able to socialize with these other birds, so. Um, what are you doing? So he doesn't scream. He went through a stage of doing it again, but I dealt with that. And he doesn't bite. Well, he'll try to nip at the other birds, but he won't bite me. Well, he might. If he gets really upset with me for not letting him go after Pippa, he might. Oh, but oh well. I've been bitten before, haven't I, Bob? Yeah. So now it's what I'm working on with him mostly is socialization. Uh, he doesn't have a problem with playing with toys. He doesn't have a problem with food. We've got him on his special diet because of his prolapse. According to an article in the Sydney Morning Herald in Australia, there's a little parrot known as Neophema chrysogaster, or you could call it the orange-bellied parrot. It's one of the 423 or less extant species of parrots left in the world. Unfortunately, it hasn't been doing terribly well. It has to travel a long distance from Victoria to Tasmania every year in order to breed. And apparently, that hasn't been going well. There have been quite a few lives lost in that traveling. So a team of scientists has gotten together, and what they have done is they've bred these birds in captivity, and they've released the babies back into the flocks. Apparently, this is working in that the flocks accepted the babies. The next question is, will they make that long trip with the rest of the flock? So we won't know the answer to this until the end of the year, but at least it's a little ray of sunshine in a world of diminishing parrots. Now Chloe, let's talk about Chloe. Uh, when I got her, she was outgoing and interested but she had feather destructive behavior. The day I met her, she was sitting on, on a gentleman's shoulder. You need to get away from Bob because that's just getting him going. Bob Lou. Here, why don't you sit over here? That will be So, I know, I know. You didn't do anything wrong, but I don't want you to get nipped. Okay? Okay? I love you, Pip Pip. Yep, I love the Pip Pip. You know I do. She was actually sitting on the gentleman that had her. He was sitting on her, she was sitting on his shoulder. And they're outside. She's fully flighted. 
And he's just wandering around, taking care of his garden. She's not doing anything, except sitting on his shoulder. She rode with me all the way back from Spring Valley to Escondido, where I lived at the time. That's about a 40 minute drive, on my shoulder. Uh, I wouldn't do that today. They should be in a cage, just for their own safety. You got in an accident, they could get out, you know, they could get hurt. Bob, uh, you gonna calm down? Poor boy. Uh-huh. Just having a bad day, aren't you, kid? Yeah. Um, she was always running up, trying to be with me, and you know, then you know, over time, she got with Snowball, and that fell apart, and and now she's a little standoffish. Uh, she does like to sit next to me, but she stopped speaking English. She used to say hello, at least. Now she doesn't do that. She makes you gonna kill yourself over there, Petar. What are you doing? Now she makes a few cute little sounds, but she doesn't speak English anymore. Um, what I'm working on with her now is widening her social group so that, hey, 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 don't do it, Pippa, don't. Thank you. Um, so that she's not just focused on Snowball and, and Cecil. Okay, I'm trying to get it so that she'll play with other birds. And I'm having some headway. Um, she is playing a little bit with Coco. She's she's also playing a little bit with uh, Cause. So it's just a matter of you know, keep working on it. And uh, a lot of people, if they had a bird and they let it mate with another bird, Snowball was her mate, even though she can't have babies. I wouldn't have let them get together if she could have babies. It, it would have... It would have made her to the point where she wouldn't want to deal with people at all. Um, <clears throat> or at least it usually does. But, um, so after that experience, she is acting more like a hen. And a lot of people with that situation, they wouldn't want a bird that wasn't paying much attention to them. But she just keep working and you can get around it. She's, she actually, that we talk, she likes me to sing to her. There's... Yeah, it's going to take some time. I've been working on it now for over a year, getting her more socialized, more interested in people again. Um, she'll probably never be the same as she used to be, but she's you, know, you just keep working with what you've got. When Coco came here, she was shy and retiring. She had further destructive behavior. And uh, I didn't actually start working on her being shy. She kind of worked on that on her own. Now, um, although she's sitting there quite quiet, if you guys have been watching these videos, you know she used to scream when these cameras were up. She didn't even do it today, not a, not a peep out of her, okay? And it's not like I'd put a clamp on her beak or something. It, she's just gotten used to it, and I helped her to get used to it by putting a tripod in the room while we were in here during normal times. No, Pippa, you're not gonna go around to the computer, please. Thank you, Pippa, good girl. But today what I'm working on with her is, uh, she's the one that has the crop that was damaged when they gave her hot food by a tube, you know, like they do because they're trying to make money and get as many of these birds out as they can, typical breeders. Um, so what I'm doing now is working on her getting her to eat things like she started eating the muffins. And which is soft enough for her, and she's eating a little bit of the mash, and then she's getting better about eating the mash, not just the peanut butter. She's so hooked on peanut butter, we're having it most of her youth, that uh, you know, you put a little bit of peanut butter up there, and then she eats that, and then you squirt a little bit of the uh, mash into her beak, because I blend it up. And then at the very end, I put a little more peanut butter, and that gets her to eat it. She's getting better about it. She did really well today. And then she doesn't want to play with toys. She's just really stopped playing with toys, so I'm working on that. She used to play quite a bit with toys, and now she doesn't want to. So that's again, that's where my focus is: is we're getting her to work with, with to, getting her to play with toys. Um, Pippa, when she came here, had some pretty bad feather destructive behavior, as you can tell. She's pretty much feathered now, aren't you, Pip? She still has a grip of iron, but it's not as bad as it used to be. What I'm working with her right now on is to keep her from flying into women's faces and trying to eat them. 
She was pretty quiet when she came here, and now she can get loud when she wants something. Pippa, I wouldn't fly into that again. Pippa, try not to, don't think about that, because that's just going to cause trouble with Bob. She's looking at, she's looking over there like she's going to go flying into Steve Jobs' face again. I just got him calmed down. Pippa! Hey, Pip, what are you doing? Don't, don't go over there, don't do it, don't. Oh, no, here we go again. No. Bob, no. Sleep. Bob. No, Pippa! Bob, back off. You, you need to get off my shoulder. And down here, you can back off. No, Bob! No! 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 Pippa, let go! Pippa, let go! Come on, back over here. Uh huh. Bobaloo! No! Okay. Calm down. Sit right there. Calm down. <laughs> so I'm working with Pippa. She's she's come quite a she's she's come around quite a bit. But I'm working with her so that she does not taunt other birds, and she's not as aggressive with other birds. And she does play with toys now. When she first came here, she wouldn't play with toys. Um, so it's toys and confidence and, and keeping her from taunting other birds. Uh, Lorelei, what are you doing up there? That's a good girl. <laughs> Sal's training tips. When you're training birds, it's important to know what to train them with. Well, the trick there is, as Sal says, to put a tray of food in front of your bird with lots of little treats and see which one they go for. Here I am presenting just such a little tray of food to Lucy. And as you can see, she goes for the most expensive item on the little tray. On this little cardboard tray, she finds what? The pine nuts. Yep, she likes pine nuts. That's why she gets them just for treats in training. It's important not to treat your bird with training treats at any other time. Don't put it in their food bowl. Don't offer it to them any other time. Now, if you're gonna try to do this to find out what your bird likes the most, Keep in mind, there's times of day when they're not hungry. As you can see in this video, Pippa would rather play with the little tray than actually eat anything on it. That's because I presented this to her at a time of day when she wasn't hungry. She had just finished eating. Now here we have Salamander. And as you can see, he's chosen something. Well, I don't think most of us would guess this, but he chose the pumpkin seed. Hmm. Well, that's probably the least expensive thing there on the tray, so I guess it all averages out. So, for Salamander, he gets the pumpkin seeds as his training treat. For Lucy, she gets the pine nuts. Um, he wants to do two things with the female. He wants to mate with them or he wants to attack them, so I've got to be careful there. Um, so I don't play Frisbee except twice a month with him. And then when I do that, he's not allowed around the other birds that day uh, because he his aggression comes up. Lorelei was uh, she was sh shy and quiet uh, before she passed into adulthood. She's still a little shy, aren't you, Lorelei? A little nervous, but she'll go after your buttons now. She knows what she wants. She'll take your earpieces from you. Um, what I'm trying to work with her is. Is I'm trying to work with her at this moment to get her more um, acclimated to people. When she meets a new person, she doesn't trust them at all. Uh -huh. Maybe there's some advantage to that, but 
what I'm trying to do now is to get her to just be a little more trusting with other people. Uh, I'm, I'm careful about who they do that with. I mean, obviously not everybody you can, you can trust them to, to deal with the bird properly. But. Uh, Rome, when he came here, was, I mean, he was really phobic. You couldn't even get him out of his cage. I put him into his cage, and he would not come out. So in order to get him from that old cage he had into the new cage, the new much bigger cage, I had to take the other one apart. And once that cage was almost completely apart, he started running, and then I just used my arms to try to <laughs> point him to the right place, and he got into his new cage. But now he he went through a phobic episode again. He was with me. I took him to a, a good place, a place where he could go and have fun, and he did, but something scared him, and then he got you know, hiding in his cage again. took about six months to get him back to where he is now, not quite the same place, but he loves to be held. He begs to be held in the morning. He begs to be held in the afternoon. And occasionally he'll go out to the... Uh, he just recently asked, too. He'll ask to go out to the aviary, which is closed right now because of the weather. Probably for the next month. Uh, maybe, maybe Sunday we may be able to go in the aviary there. Guessing it might be 70 degrees we can do that. Um, the problem here with the aviary, it, when the temperature is a little bit cool, is that the neighbors, uh, they burn fossil fuels in their fireplace. And smoke is not good for your birds. It can kill them. So, but, um, so what I'm working with him in uh -oh. doing is to get him to play with more toys, which is, and it's, we're getting there. He's starting to, he, if, if his toys get torn up, he'll uh -oh. look at me and like, where's my toys? And also to make him less fearful. So that I can get him to the vet without completely destroying his personality. Uh, not much point in taking him for a regular exam if he's going to fall apart after you do it. So, Pip Pip, I'll leave it alone. Pip Pip. Pip Pip. Sugar, when she came here, she was pretty phobic and standoffish. She really didn't want to have much to do with anybody. She was terribly torn up with feather destructive behavior. And she was a mutilator, so um, it took a long time. But where she is now, she's pretty cuddly. She's she's, aren't you sugar? She's sure of herself. She uh, she likes to get hugged every night for about twenty minutes to a half an hour. Um, she gets her own special time for that. Otherwise, she probably to sit on the perch and watch what's going on. Uh, but she does want to get hugged at night. She likes to get her beak rubbed. You've probably seen that if you've seen any of our videos out in the aviary. She'll come over and she <laughs> she makes this little whining sound that means rub my beak, rub my beak. So um, so what I'm working on with her is is that she's less nervous about cuddling. What will happen is she'll cuddle you, cuddle you for a little while. I say 20 minutes or so, and then she'll look up like, oh, I don't want to be here, and then you got to, you know, take her back to her, her night cage, so. Um, she also is, she's playing with toys, but I'm trying to increase the variety of things she'll play with. Um, when Peaches came here, she was a mess. She was a poor diet. She was in pain. She was chewing just her chest, but that was because that was all she could reach, and she was screaming quite a bit. <clears throat> Now what we're dealing with is uh, <coughs> trying to get her to play more by herself. She has a tendency to come over and just beg to be petted, and she won't put up with anything else. She'll start screaming at you if you won't pet her. Right, Peach? You've been doing very well today, though. Very quiet. No, don't go after the trackpad. Please don't go after the trackpad. Thank you. Salamander, he was unpredictable. And he was loud, loud and unpredictable. Um, I remember seeing him go like a uh, like a cruise missile after the lady who had rel relinquished him to us. Um, and he came after her on top of the cages like he intended to kill her. And now he's just a big old sweetheart, aren't you? But. If you guys remember, he had that horrible sound he was making, and I had to work with him to to break him of that. 
and for the most part he's broken. Once in a while he'll go into that sound, but um, and if you've heard it, <laughs> you know why you don't want him to make it. It's the most irritating sound, so. Cosma, when she came here, she was bonded to her sister. She was quiet and shy, and if you talked to her, she'd put her head down like, you're not really talking to me, are you? Um, now she loves to fly across the room to you. Um, she's not quite so shy. She'll still put her head down, but it comes back up pretty fast. And she bobs her head quite a bit. I'm focusing on getting her to play with toys. That seems to be the biggest thing right now with her. And Cecil. When Cecil came here, he was almost catatonic. I mean, he was like, Hey, 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 no! No! Pippa, no! No, Pippa! Good girl. Thank you. Good girl. Good girl. That's a good girl. Um, it was like having a toy bird. There wasn't a, re there was like there wasn't a real bird there. But now he's... Uh, He's, all, he's full of life and interested in things. Bob, be nice to everybody now. Good boy, Bob. That's a good girl. I know, Lucy. Um, now he's playful and outgoing, and he sings a lot and talks a lot. And he's learned to say some words. Um, he still has aggression with toys. So if he's got a toy... He did that recently. He was in the uh, aviary and he had a toy and all the birds scattered out of his way. Um, because they've learned when he has a toy, he's he's Mr. Hyde, you know. The rest of the time he's Mr. Jekyll, or he's Dr. Jekyll, but he still has some territoriality in his cage and I'm working with that. When you go to get him out, sometimes he doesn't want to come out of his cage. And so he will look at you with that I'm going to lunge at you attitude on his face. And uh, you have to talk to him quietly and get him out. So what I'm doing is I'm making it clear that when I pick him up, I'm going to sing his song. And he loves to have his song sung. So that's one of the methods I'm using. I'm also using uh, a little bit of peanut butter that he likes on a craft stick. Oh, baby girl. Baby girl. So, the most important thing to remember, Peach, you're sitting on that again. Bobaloo, come here. You're going to leave Peaches alone. Come on. Come on, Bob. No, no, no. Come here. Come on. No. Back over here. Come on, you can sit over there. There you go. Um, remember to focus on what they're doing, okay? What they're doing today. Um, and what that might, might mean for tomorrow. Um, as with Snowball, who was picking at the little blemishes on your skin, so somebody taught him to, to do more of that. They thought it was funny, so they started teaching him to go up to people and do that. So once in a while, if you've got a scab on you, he'll pull it off. Okay? But it's only once in a while. But you've got to catch these things before they become big problems. And when he first came here, it was a big problem. You couldn't hold him without him nipping uh, your, any freckles you had on your body. So um, keep your eyes open and observe. And remember that change is always going to be there. You need to learn to love what you have at the moment and help to shape it into something that's fun for the future. Okay. If you're enjoying our show, please consider donating. You can become a sponsor, giving one dollar or more for each show through Patreon. We do two a month. This is especially helpful because we can count on a monthly income. And if you can imagine what it's like if you had to count on, you never knew what you were going to get at the beginning of the month, whether you could pay all your bills. Um, so we, we especially appreciate people who uh, join us through Patreon. Um, or you can make one-time donations. And both of those are available on our website, chloesanctuary.org. So you can support us by going to our website and clicking on the appropriate button on the front page. Right? What do you think, Bob? What do you say? What do you say? Well, if Bob taught anything to people today is that when you see something where it looks like you're having a major aggression, 
You can deal with it. There are ways to deal with it. But you got to trust yourself first. I had a, a mentor who said that that's what trust is about. Whether you trust yourself to handle a situation. It doesn't matter what... Whoa! Very good, sugar. What are you doing? You want to go over there? You want to go over there, sugar? Bob, get up here. Bob. Bob, come on. Come on, Bob. Up, up. Come on, Bob. Good boy. Good boy. Come on, Bob. Come on, Bob. Come on. That's my boy. Good bird. Good boy. Um, yeah, he seems to be targeting me. He thinks it's moving around, don't you? Yeah. Where are you going? Sugar bird. We were done, but you started climbing, so I guess you're the one who's going to say goodbye to everybody, huh, sugar? We'll see how this plays out. She doesn't care too much for Salamander. There she goes. Pippa, you want to say goodbye to everybody? Huh, Pip? Do you want to, Pip? Or Sugar, do you want to say goodbye to everybody? How about a flip? How about a tail flash, Sugar? How about a tail flash? Sugar bird. Sugar bird. <laughs> Bob. Pippa, you're just, you're just playing with fire today. Bob. No. <laughs> Okay, Lucy, you can say goodbye to everybody. Lucy, say goodbye. We welcome your feedback on our videos. We look forward to your insights, tips, questions, stories, and pictures. You can email us at cockatude at chloesanctuary.org, reach us on Twitter at sign Chloe Sanctuary and join with us on our Facebook Chloe Sanctuary page. So science knowledge only adds to the excitement, the mystery, and the awe of a flower. Fast Food Cockatude. Hi, and welcome to Fast Food Cockatude number four. The key to training. Well, the key to training is finding the right reward. And in most cases, that reward's going to be food. So how do you figure out what these guys like best? Well, when are we usually hungry? We're usually hungriest after we've had a fast. And we have a word in English that's called breakfast, which is to break our fast. When we've had a fast overnight, what we do is we take a tray, a little tray like a cookie, like something you bake cookies on, okay? And you're going to put different things that they might like, you know, a, a pine nut, an almond, a little piece of papaya, you know, dried papaya, dried pineapple. Um, different kinds of things they might like. And you're going to line them up and then you, you put this whole thing in front of them, a sunflower seed, a pumpkin seed, whatever, just a bunch of different things across there. And you put it in front of them and the first item they reach over and grab, that's, that's their favorite thing. Now, they do have changing diet and they do sometimes change what they like, but that's going to be your training item. So you're going to take that out of their diet. They're not going to get that. They, they pick the sunflower seed. They're never going to see a sunflower seed except when you're training them. By presenting a tray with food on it, letting them choose what they like, then you've got that first training tool. Now, one of the things too, um, 
recently I had someone talking about having a problem with teaching their birds step up. And actually that's not the first thing you want to train. The first thing you want to train is targeting. And you can use a stick, like a chopstick or something, or you can use your hand and just put a little treat in your hand and move your hand like this and have them target to it. So just I usually use the word target, but Watch it, Bob. Watch it. So the first thing you want to train is targeting. So basically, you're just going to teach them. You're going to put your birds on a perch. You're going to put your hand up and say, I usually say target, but you don't have to. Put your fingers up in a position like this. Always remember, it's best to be consistent. The same fingers, same hand, three fingers, treat in them like this. They move over just a couple of inches and get it. And then a little further each time until finally you have them going up for it, down for it, all over. They'll follow your hands for the treat. That's targeting. So if you teach them targeting with their favorite item, which they, you figured out from doing the tray, the item that you've taken out of your diet, then what you have, is, that will certainly help you with training them to step up. Because when they go to step up, you can have you treat your hand like this and your hand out in front. Your hand here, Coco, calm down. You quit vibrating on my lap. Get over here and play with Coco. So, if, if, the, if he was sitting on a perch over here and I had my hand like this and his hand in between, I could have him go for this. He's used to going for it. So, saying step up and doing this would certainly lead him in the right direction, if you see what I'm saying. If you're going to be training a bird, you're going to want to be able to move them around. And that's the way we generally do it. We've already trained them to target to our hand. So when we're training them, they're going to be focused on the target hand. So that's it for Fast Food Cockatude 4. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Cockatude is a presentation of the Chloe Sanctuary for Parrots and Cockatoos, a nonprofit charity dedicated to the empowerment of captive parrots in public awareness.